Hi everyone, and welcome to uh, the support office hours. We're going to talk about the last person API today. My name is Nitai Bartal, and I'm the tech lead of Tier 3, one of the tech leads in Tier 3. Um, um, my, one of our, my colleagues, Ali Glosser, will um, accompany in this session. He will uh, try to answer as many questions as he can during the session through chat. And if needed, we'll also um, stop for questions in the middle of the session and have another Q&A in the end of the session. So uh, in last person, we have a tradition of first uh, introducing ourselves to our customers. So a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Nitai Batal again. I'm two years with live person. Uh, in the past, I was a QA, a developer, and integration engineer. In live person, I mainly handle API and mobile cases. I'm happily married, plus one. This is my beautiful daughter, Caroline, you can see in the pictures, and my wife, of course. In the past, I was uh, an officer, intelligent officer in the Israeli Navy. So, um, a few words about our team, the Tier 3 team. Um, it's a team of engineers based mostly in Israel and also in the U.S., in Atlanta. We work uh, with all the customers of Life Person, um, and, and once Cases are escalated to tier three. They're usually a complex cases need more investigation, and we work very closely with R and D and production teams on resolving those issues. So that's a, a bit about myself and the team I'm in. So what are we going to talk about today? So our agenda for today will be we're going to talk about the benefits that you can have using the last person APIs what kind of APIs we have, and which API is better for which use case. We're going to talk about the community of our uh, live person for developers and the flow of starting to develop till a successful launch of an app. We're going to have a quick demo about the chat API, and we're going to open the stage for questions from the audience if there, is any, if there are any. So let's talk a few words about um, live person solution. So live person focuses on engaging the right customer with the right resource at the right time to drive incremental sales and service value while maximize your agent resources. As you can see, there's a few layers to our solution. The bottom one is the infra infrastructure one which, as it sounds, is the actually a layer where the services are hosted on. The next one is the data layer. The data, data layer is where all the various information is gathered and is stored. And the intelligence layer is the uh, layer where we keep track of your visitors, uh, we select which visitor to engage, and we determine how and when to engage them to maximize success. Open our platform to APIs and developers um, is an exciting opportunity for creating new ways to deliver value on top of our core product. The live person um, API exposes integration parts for the monitoring, the intelligence, the engagement, and the actual interaction. With all of those, you can enhance the usage of our platform. So let's see, have a very quick um, look at our um, basic chat solution. So if you're not familiar with it, a visitor enters a page which is monitored. The monitor tag tracks all the visitor's attributes and activities in real time and sends this information to the live person application server. The application server then updates the agent console with the visitor data. Based on the business defined in the rules of the account, if the business attributes and activities match specific rules, an invitation to chat 
or a button is displayed for the visitor to start engaging with, with your agent. And then a chat starts. So that's the basic flow of the chat solution. So what, does, what, what can you do with APIs that are beyond our core product? So you can engage beyond chat, which means you can add a video, a chat payment option, or even uh, fitting forms together with the customer. You can engage the customer anywhere, on a mobile device, on your own desktop application. You can use your own data sources in order to um, provide added value, added information to the chat, like your CRM, on your ERP services. And in that sense, you can increase agent productivity. If, he, if the agent shows content, which can be very clearly understood by the visitor, it can save a lot of back and forth chat lines between the two. So let's go into depth a bit, the specifics of the API offerings we have. First and foremost is the chat JavaScript API. The chat JavaScript API is used to create innovative chat window designs for any browser-based environment. It's used for client-based implementation on your website or a web application and even mobile. As I mentioned before, you can engage anywhere on a mobile device, on a web application. You can create an embedded chat, pop-up, pop-in, in order to um, better use the real estate of your screen. You can um, create a look and feel that is similar to your website look and feel. And you can enrich a chat experience with other engagement types like collaboration with the, with the user, co-browse, um, and everything that you can think of. Just a quick screenshot of our future embedded window. This is on mobile. You see the button, and once it's clicked, we have an interaction done on the mobile. So this is just an example. Next, we have the Chuck REST API. You should use the Chuck REST API to create chat, applica chat applications for your desktop application, for your mobile service, or for server-based application. Um, it's designed to be used server-to-server -server communication. Um, it could be used for proxy solutions for mobile chat limitation, like our own LP Mobile is based on visit and chat APIs. In that sense, when the actual client, the mobile device, loses connectivity with the, with the proxy, which could be the case when moving around, the proxy still keeps the session open regardless of the mobile disconnection. Another example shown here is an SMS to chat solution. Again, the, there's a proxy that sends the, the chat lines to the SMS, to the SMS client on the device, and receives the chat lines from the agent. The engagement SDK. The engagement window SDK enables web application and widgets to be added to engagement window. The engagement SDK exposes a set of methods that developers can use to enhance the visitor experience and communicate with their code on the agent side. It's actually two sides to the equation, one designed on the right pane of the engagement window. I'm going to show you an example in a minute. And the other is a tab on the agent console that holds the other side of the engagement, the side that the agent needs to contribute to. You can use it to have video sent from the agent to the client, sorry, to the visitor. You can collaborate together, see the screen, fill forms together. And it can enhance the productivity of the agent in a sense that less words, more content, usually those kind of scenarios end in a quicker resolution time. So an example here, as you can see on the left, there is an engagement window 
And on the right, there is the um, agent console. You can see that the visitor is chatting to the agent, and he wants him to send him a video. The agent will then go ahead to the engagement option tab, and will use the video engagement widget in order to send a, a YouTube video. All he needs to do is enter the URL and the subject of the, of the video. Once he sends it over, it's automatically opened on the client side, and he can play the video. The right pane is the media pane, where all the engagement SDK is hosted. And the area, this is the area that you can manipulate and add content to on top of the actual chat being performed on the left. The next API in line is the Visit API. The Visit API is used to monitor the activities of your visitors beyond your website on a wide range of devices, application and websites, using HTTP requests. This can include, again, mobile devices, like our own LP mobile solution, it uses Visit APIs for the monitoring state. In addition, you can use the Visit API to add custom variables to an existing visit session from your CRM or your IP machine or any other external data source you need. And that could be used to better the experience when the chat starts. The agent already has various information about the visitor already before the chat starts, and when the engagement starts, it could be very useful. Another option is using the Visit API to monitor the user on mobile or desktop application, which is not an option using our tag, our default tag. Example here can be seen on a mobile application, an iPhone mobile application, that has implemented the Visit API. You can see that once the application is launched, a few seconds later, the visitor is being monitored, and you can see it on the agent console. The various information we, this, the, this, the, the developers decide to enter is shown on the right pane of the info. And once um, the visitor scrolls into a specific uh, web page, we can send all this information down to the agent, and he knows exactly what the visitor is looking in. This, for example, this Honda vehicle. If the visitor decides to purchase the product, we can also announce on that using the custom variable that the conversion was made. And of course, if needed, you can chat with the agent, and a chat starts. This is an example for the Visit API on a mobile solution. Last but not least is the Agent API, also a REST. It's used to create agent chat applications from any desktop or mobile device or server-based software application. These applications can enable agents, real or virtual, to log into their last person account, take chats from visitors, and to trust the chats to other agents. It can be used to virtual agent, and I'm going to show you just a, a slide in a second, or use it to embed the agent into your own desktop application, or a support cockpit, or even CRM, in order to facilitate your support personnel to have a better experience if needed. So an example of a virtual agent is a visitor that starts a chat on a page. You design this agent API for virtual agent, and this virtual agent takes the chat instead of being escalated directly to a real agent. Once the business logic decides that this session needs to be escalated to a real agent, then the chat is being transferred to a real agent. And again, since you can, minip, you can use the agent APIs, you can have the agent users mobile device, our own live person agent console, 
or again into, integrated into a CRM solution. So those were an overview of the APIs and which should be used for which use case. And before we go into a quick live demo, I would like to open the stage for any questions there are. And for that reason, I'm going to unmute the audience if, need, if any questions arose. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and continue. And if needed, we'll um, stop again in the end of the presentation. So you are now muted. Okay. So so if in order to get to our developer community, you can go to connectlifeperson.com. There's a lot of information you can gather here about Live Engage, about technical discussions, and what we're discussing today is the developer section, which is this one. So let's go ahead and go into here. So if it's your first visit to our community, I would highly recommend to start the visit with going to the Get Started section. The Get Started section has step-by-step -step instructions regarding usage of our community and on ramping you up as quickly as possible to using our API. So I really highly recommend that if it's your first journey to the community, you'll start there. So let's go back. And the second place we should go to is the API itself, where you have the documentation of the various APIs, as you mentioned. I'm not going to go into details about the application plugins, but since you see it on the left, I'll explain that this, the application plugins are met a way to um, package a few rules together to a single container and have that container being installed on any account you would like without being tackled with. with. In that case, you can either, a, a partner can use that to provide a solution for more than one customer without the needed help to edit the manual rules on each account, or being deployed at various accounts with one click of a button. The first thing you should do in order to work with an API, with our APIs, is to create an account. So let's do that together. As you can see, I created the user and logged into it. You can more than welcome to do it. All the content is um, available even to non-registered users, but whenever you would like to interact with us, you will have to reg register, of course. So I highly recommend you do that. So let's go ahead and view my account. I have already one created. You'll see there are two different accounts here, a small business account and a mid-sized business account. Please disregard the differences. It's an historical reason differences. Both of them provide the same feature. So all you need to do, in your case, all of them will be linked. Let's create a small business account. As you can see, I was provided with a new free account for development purposes. Once you log in it for the first time, you'll be asked to change user and password. And the default user and password is the one created, you, you can see here. Once I log in, I have to change the password. And this is the admin console. 
I'm not going to go into too many details about the admin console. Just know this is the place to configure everything you need to, to do. Create agents, create administrators, create skills, create surveys, etc. And then eventually, you need to install the key when you create one. What is the key and why do we need it? So we have accounts and we need to, to know that you are entitled to use that account. And to do so, you create a key and install to the account and use that from your own application. So let's go ahead and create a key. So this is the creation key process. You need to provide the application name, which privilege you would like the key to be used. You can see there's a signed REST and an unsigned REST API. The difference is whether you'd like to use OAuth credit overlay or not. The difference in when you use OAuth, you need to provide four keys for each request. When an unsigned one, you only need to provide one. We'll show examples of both of them. So we can check which APIs you need for this key. You need to select if it's a development purpose or live one. A development key will be automatically approved without provisioning. And live key would need us to go through a few provisioning stages to make sure that your account is ready to accommodate an API solution. You should provide a description of the application, the application support the details, and some more questions, and approve it. I'm going to have, or I already have created a, a, a keys in advance, so you can see it here. As you can see, there's the application key in secret, and the API privileges the keys was created for. You can either request a live key from a development key when you need one, or request a key, a live key in the dropdown that I mentioned before. So we need to install that key to an account in order to use it. How do we do that? We're going to install it in an account, but first I would like to, uh, we need to install it in the account. Since I saved the uh, account name, I have it written here. So let's just put it in. The ID of the administrator and the password, which I changed a second ago. Okay, maybe I didn't. Sorry about that. Okay. Once you logged into the admin, you'll be, there's be a few windows you need to approve in order to install your key. You need to have an admin user in order to do so. So I have, if I, there's all the details that you provide for the key is shown here. You need to approve it. And once you did it, you also have the second parameters if, if you need to send OAuth request. Since I created the signed API key as well for the various chat, visit, and agent, I can I need to use those two key variables when sending an API request. I'll show it in a second. You can always go to the application section and to maximize the key that's in question and see those two parameters here. So let's go into a few more details about two options of our APIs, the JavaScript and the Chat REST API. The Chat JavaScript API and every other page here of the APIs provides a bit of an overview of, about the solution before going into depth about each one of them. There's an overview, there's a video tutorials and other documentation and sample codes. This is um, where you can see the actual um, functions the JavaScript has and various implementation you can use. Another one is the sample code we provide for you. Here in the bottom, you can see you can download this one. It can take three files and Here's an example of it running on my local machine. So in this case, we provide you with the option to put in a site 
a key. A domain is not is an option. You don't have to put it in. The devlifeperson.net is domain for development. We're going to show it in a second and the REST APIs. Let's go ahead and take the keys and application we need to. So let's go to view my application accounts. So we're going to use this account I created before. And the key on the account that again I created previously. I have a agent logged in on a Lifeless and Application Console here. And let's start the chat. So once you log into here, you can see that this is from a previous session. All I need to do is refresh because we support an automatically resume. So you can see there's a few sections here we provided with a very, very basic UI. There's a transfix section here. There's an option to send a line. There's an option to set a skill for the chat, send custom variables, set the the name, and eventually get an email transcript of the chat. So let's start a chat with the test skill. This is a skill I already configured on the account. So you can see we provide here a log section that you can put all the changes in the, um, all the changes of the state, for example, um, the request chat was request chat was ha happened, and later on you can see that the status of the chat is currently waiting. And I can take the chat. Once I've taken the chat, you can see here there's an info message that you're talking with this admin, and let's hi, can I help you? I need help, sorry. And you can see those lines are transferred to the agent. Again, we only provided a few basic functions. All the functions are, can be added to the structure, the discussion we provided, and you can extend it to a better UI, of course, and a more enhanced experience. For example, surveys that we didn't provide here support, but you can, of course, follow up the, f the functionality documentation and understand exactly how to implement it. So that's the JavaScript version 3. I'm going to give you another example of the REST chat API. In order to do that, we're using, uh, we're very um, happy with using the Firefox REST client plugin that you can download from the store. It's, if you write REST client for Firefox, it should be the first hit you get. If you follow the documentation of the um, API REST option, you'll see a, a very detailed explanation about the requests you can send and the responses you should see. Um, in this case, if you can go to request, you see exactly how to create a request that's going to be a valid online person. The various headers you need to provide, application key, etc. So here you need to provide the relevant domain. In general, in production, you can use the API lifeperson.net that will redirect you to the right domain. But the REST client for Firefox doesn't know how to redirect well, so we're going to leave it with dev, specifically dev. Two, he two headers that we need to provide is the application XML content type and authorization application key. And provide here a key that you have created and install the bank account. Very important. The same key. And if you read it, you can see that if you send it to the base resource, we call it, we, you get the very the various options that you have on this key. For example, this key is privileged for all the options. So we have a chat, an agent, and a visit. So all of them are REST. To create a session, we can send a post request 
So this URL, all you need to do is copy this, paste it here, make sure that you leave the v, v equals 1, change it to post instead of get. Once we do that, you're going to get a 200 created response, and this is your chat session. As you can see, the, ring, the ringing of the agent, if you heard it, means that the chat has got to the agent. So now we need to answer the agent chat. Let's take that chat. And if we can, again, get for the specific session returned here. This is your specific session that you created. We're going to send a get to that and see all the information of this chat. For example, the events. We can pull the exit survey. You can transcript request at the end of the chat or during the chat. And you can see here, for example, the agent typing and untyping. If you see, if I start typing here, you see that this should change to typing instead of not typing. Once I remove this character, it will change to not typing. Uh, important notice is the JavaScript version 3 keeps the session alive every two seconds as long as the network is connected. It keeps the session alive and, and makes sure it doesn't disconnect from the client side. You're the one who, are who needed to do that on the REST API. You need to make sure that you send the keep alive or any kind of request on the session in order to make it not cash out after a few seconds. So this is a very um, useful tool for testing the REST chat API, or agent API, or visit API. How do I do the same request using OATH? So I'll remove, if you heard this phone, that means the chat ended because I didn't send any information on the chat. You can see that the other chat, the JavaScript one, is still working, still chatting, and hasn't timed out because the chat JavaScript does it for you. So let's have a request a chat for um, using the OAuth credential. All we need to do here is choose OAuth 1.0. We don't support 2.0 yet. Put in the customer secret, the custom consumer key and consumer secret. This is the one you can see here. Once you install this on an account, there's other two parameters I've showed you before. And you can put it on the second two variables, the access token and access token secret. So I'm going to insert it here, add the header of the application, ask for a, already for a chat request, and get the 201. So again, the question is created, together with OAuth. You can see that the client already adds other parameters, like the signature, the nuance, and the timestamp, without you asking about it. So it's a very, it's, it's, it's kind of easy. So those are the chat REST API and JavaScript API with a quick overview of how to use. The next stage is created a client key, which I mentioned. I'm going to mention it again. You can either request light key here and change the privileges or ask for a new key. Once you've done that and implemented the deploy, you can have issues. You can have problems. Something doesn't work during the development process or after it. What do you do? There's a very um, good forum that myself and Alec are answering the questions and whoever is knowledgeable enough can help you. But in any case, you'll, you'll get an answer from us in a few days at most anyway. To do that, you should go to the Ask a Question section. Make sure that you are following the group. Otherwise, you won't be able to join the group. Otherwise, you won't be able to post a question. Ask a question and fill in the details of the issue you're having. I highly recommend before doing so, searching for an answer for your question. If it's a basic or not too complicated of a question, 
I assume that we already answered that question, and you can have that question answered quickly instead of maybe waiting a day or two for our answer. So please go ahead and search before posting anyone. It could be saving you some time. So we went through how to register the community, how to open an account, how to create and install an account, uh, sorry, a key, how to develop your application, that's your part here, you need to do that, but you can ask the questions, we'll try to steer the right way as far as we can regarding um, architecture and possible implementation, request an API assistance, asking for a live key, and install application on a live account. We will approach you on the forum for a private message if needed in order to, if, if you, know, you feel that the information is more private than you would like to be shared with the rest of the world. So this is the content we are plan to provide in our session. And again, I'm going to open this um, session for questions if anyone has any questions you'd like to ask. Um, Alec, do you have any questions from the chat? Okay, we don't have anything, so please go ahead and feel free to have any question that you can, uh, that you w would like to have an answer for. You are no longer muted. Okay. Um, great question, Merlin. Um, through the customer center, we're gonna have a link to the to the recording of the session and any question that follows will also um, be posting that together with the video session. So through the customer center, if you go to the same place you registered, you will see a link to the place where the um, video of this session will be posted. And any question on discussion group can be asked. Does that answer your question, Merlin? You're welcome. Um, is there anything else? Okay, everyone. So again, thank you for joining us. I hope it was helpful for you to ramp you up with the usage of our APIs. And again, if you have any questions or any issues you're suffering from, please open a post for us in the community. We'll do everything needed to resolve your issues. Thank you again and see you next time.